What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 101 of Trail Tales. My name is Kyle O'Grady. I am a huge hiking nerd, and you know the drill. Every single week on this podcast, I chat with other hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. This week's guest is a man that hopefully most of you are familiar with. His name is James Appleton. He has been a previous guest on the show. It was episode number 70 that he was on here last time. And you also might know him from the fact that he hosts his own hiking podcast, just like me. It's called the 46 of 46 podcast. It's all about the Adirondacks. And as we talk about a little bit in our conversation here, hopefully in the future, he will expand from the Adirondacks as well. We focused for pretty much the entire episode here on the kind of controversial issue of overcrowding or overuse or lack of parking, lack of access, too many people, blah, 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 uh, in the high peaks region of the Adirondacks. If you're familiar with the issue, you probably know what I'm talking about. If not, it's kind of hard to describe exactly what the issue is because there's kind of some fundamental disagreements on, yeah, what the root of the issue even is. And we do talk about that in this episode. So generally, I don't take on some of the more controversial issues on this podcast, But I think that James has some really valuable opinions on these issues because as we talk about in the episode, he actually lives in the Adirondack Park. He lives in Lake Placid. So these issues aren't just about access to his favorite hiking trails. These issues are about access to his home, essentially. So he's got some really, really good insight on these issues. And I will just say this is obviously just like one person's opinion. There there are definitely conflicting opinions out there and that's great. So if this is something you really care about, if you frequent the High Peaks region, then, you know, do your research, go get some other opinions as well. I got to thank James because again, it's not like these are like super divisive, like really, you know, controversial issues, but you know, there are a lot of differing opinions, obviously. And so the fact that he was willing to come on here and basically just put it all out there is something that I really, really admire and really, really appreciate. So James, thank you so much for doing this. We're going to have to do another episode soon. With that said, folks, I think we're just going to jump right into it. I'm not going to plug anything today. I know it's a rarity. Uh, Yeah, let's do it. Episode number 101 with James Appleton. All right, episode 101 of Trail Tales. I am here, well, I'm not with him, but I am on the line with James Appleton, who is a repeat guest on the show. This is his second episode. You might know him from the 46 of 46 podcast, a podcast that specializes in the Adirondacks and maybe other places too eventually, James. I don't know. Maybe that's a good question to kind of lead off with here once I'm done your introduction. But um, yeah, I was just a guest on his podcast as well, so everybody should go listen to that. James, uh, do you have do you do like numbers? Like, how can people go find that one? Uh, the podcast is on um, it's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and everything, and I believe it is episode seventy seven. Okay, I believe. Cool. I cool. want to say seventy seven, but uh, it's definitely one of the last couple episodes, so it'll be pretty easy to find. I gotcha. I gotcha. Just look for Kyle O'Grady, Kyle hates hiking, all that nonsense. Um, it was a great episode, dude. I, I really appreciate you having me on there. Um, it was a lot of fun. I listened back to it actually just the other day because for some reason in my head, I thought I sounded like a bit of an idiot and I always sound like a bit of an idiot, but I actually wasn't as bad as I, I thought I was when I was actually recording. So I just, I appreciate you having me on there. It was fun. Oh, uh, thanks for, thanks for having me back. Clearly, uh, you didn't get too sick of me, but uh, yeah, it was a fun episode. It's fun to chat, you know, talk shop, especially with another podcaster who also happens to do a hiking podcast, That's you know, right. so it's fun. And, you know, we both kind of know the same areas and the same mountains and whatnot. So it, it makes for good, good banter back and forth. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so yeah, I kind of came up with that question on the spot there, uh, while I was doing your introduction, um, right now, Have you done any content not, well, I guess, you know, in my episode, I guess we kind of went beyond the Adirondacks, but have you done any, um, you know, episodes like specifically for anything outside of the Adirondacks yet? So far, I haven't ventured outside the, uh, the blue line of the Adirondack park, mainly because my show kind of 
which was just going to be like an outdoors hiking show about becoming an Adirondack 46er. It was going to be that story start to finish. And then that was going to be it. Um, the show continued because people kept asking for more episodes, even though I had no intention of doing more episodes. And since then, it has evolved uh, tremendously. But I kind of just naturally formed the the Adirondack niche um, with no intentions of that being what it was. But mm -hmm. it also kind of revolves around where I go hiking. And since I live right here in Lake Placid in the heart of the Adirondack Park, uh, I don't travel very far to go hiking. So it's kind of naturally formed uh, the Adirondacks um, as far as the location goes. I haven't gone outside of the the ADK in any episodes yet. Uh, I've hiked elsewhere, but I have not gone right. outside for episodes. But you know, as as it grows and as I decide to, uh, I'll probably venture out for sure. I was gonna say like that. That was that was gonna be my next question. Is oh, you know, are you gonna kind of try to, you know, cover some stuff outside, uh, outside of the blue line? Because I think that'd be pretty cool, you know. And at the same time, it's like yeah, it's the forty six of forty six podcast. Um, you know, that's kind of obviously a reference to the Adirondacks, but. It can still be done, you know. My friend sure. uh, Colby, who who uh, co-founded Forty Six Climbs, the uh, charity, yep. um, you know, they obviously that's got the name Forty Six, you know, as a reference to the Adirondacks in it. But that's a that's a global freaking uh, mm -hmm. event now, which is which is really really cool. So yeah, I yeah, I, I think you definitely should. But obviously, it's got to be like somewhat of a a transition. You can't just all of a sudden. You know, just never <laughs> talk about. Yeah, the other definitely. There was a there. Was, first off, congrats on what you did with forty six clients this year and raising all that money. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's really neat. And it, you know, I've had a lot of people mention that. You know, they're like, oh, "No, it's the forty six of forty six podcast." Obviously, that's the Adirondacks and this and that. But it's like nobody who doesn't hike here knows what 46 means it's a totally irrelevant number so to me it's like it's kind of like an ode and it's like a little nod but it could easily be any you could go anywhere and that's just like a little mm. reference to the adk and you know if you know you know that sort of thing right, and right. there was back before covid hit um in february i was talking to um a potential sponsor for the show and they were super stoked on what i was doing and kind of the format and they thought the show was creative, how I kind of like do the audio trip reports in a sense. And we were talking and they're based out in Seattle and they, you know, we were talking on the phone about them sponsoring the show and um, venturing out and going out west and doing the same style episodes, but out, you know, on mountains out there. And I was like, yes, that sounds awesome. That's kind of what I want to do. And then COVID hit and everything just disappeared. Yeah, so yeah. It didn't, it didn't work out, uh, unfortunately, but the the goal is to always you know to expand it and be able to do that but um that requires a whole a whole other set of uh circumstances and funding and all that jazz to be able to yeah. get out west to do those sorts of things but yeah it's you know it's 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 nice and it would honestly do I I'd love to hear someone else do the exact same story or same type of show that I do but elsewhere so I can just hear about other people's adventures out in the woods um out west right, down right south wherever it doesn't matter yeah, yeah. And, and and one thing people need to understand that have never listened to uh james's podcast before is you know you do interviews like obviously the one that mm -hmm. i was on but um a lot of the episodes it's almost and i said this last time so try not to repeat myself too much but i feel like it's almost like a a, a vlog like a youtube video just like you know but it's a podcast like you're just not not a vlog as in like hey smash subscribe but a vlog as in you're just telling your story right yeah um and you know that's that's the the podcast so that's why obviously it'd, it'd be a little bit harder for you to kind of venture out because you'd actually have to like physically go out versus this podcast i can just like have whoever on even if it's a place exactly. i've never been to and never intend on on going to so um you know it's i that's that's again not trying to repeat myself too much but that's what I appreciate about appreciate about your podcast is it's just different. Most of these hiking podcasts, you know, not all of them, but most of them are just like mine. They're just interviews and shit, which is which is great. But it's most cool people to see. prefer the interviews. You think so? I don't know, man. You've had a lot of success with your style, though. I appreciate that. But yeah, I actually, I mean, I started the interviews uh, episodes too, just to like because a lot of people like those too. So I was like, okay, we could tackle other subjects. But yeah, there's, it's a mix. I want people to like not know what type of episode is coming on Friday, whether it's a trip report episode. Yes, or a that's so cool. Fire story or a, you know, summit session, as I call the interviews. You know, yeah, that way it's just like, 
keeps it different, keeps it interesting, and it all kind of revolves around the only two. The only two like parameters I put around my podcast are it has to take pl- it has to take place in the outdoors, and um, maybe the Adirondacks. Basically, it's like it has to hit one of those. That's just has to hit one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, one of those boxes, either right, the outdoors right. or the Adirondacks. Then it makes sense, you know, kind of like for who listens to it. But other than that, it's like whatever, whatever I feel like doing, whether it's a campfire story or it's a a summit session about this subject or that subject, you know, or I, I hike this mountain or that mountain. It all just kind of it's on brand, I suppose. Is yeah, what they would say yeah. in the biz. The biz. <laughs> if I was in the biz, that's what they'd say. <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. So. One thing that we kind of touched on last time, or we might have, it's, it's been a while now, we might have talked about it a little bit, but um, I know, I don't, I don't think we really got too deep, is the issue of, I don't even know how to say it, overcrowding versus overuse versus parking and permits and just the whole, the whole, the explosion of popularity that the High Peaks region in the Adirondacks has seen, and it's been talked about a little bit on other episodes as well, but um, haven't really ever gone too in depth. And the reason is partially because honestly, I just don't really like have super informed opinions on it. Like I've got, you know, I, I kind of, I've got my general opinions about it, but I don't, you know, I, I'm not really willing to die on those Hills, I guess. Um, I feel like I always use that term wrong when I try to say it, but anyways, um, it's a great phrase. Use it, it is. more. When you use it correctly, it's <laughs> I, one <laughs> one time I said die I think it was in a video I said die on a hill or I don't know, it just sounded it just sounded awkward when I said it just like that time too, but it's all good. People know what I meant. Um anyways, yeah, I've just kind of you know, not really gone super in depth on the issue and I kind of want to do that in this episode. Not the whole episode, sure. maybe, you know, we'll see where we where we end up going, but um I think you're a good person to talk to about this because you live in the outer, like in the high peaks. <laughs> it's like yep. it's like not only are you passionate about the mountains there, but this is quite literally, you know, where your livelihood is based right now. And so I just, I'm not gonna say, I don't want to say it makes your opinion more valuable than other people's opinions, but I think certainly that should, you know, tell people that you have like a very uh, uh, vested interest in seeing this sure. situation resolved. Um, the best way possible. So anyways, why don't we start by just kind of describing what this very vague that I, the way I described it issue actually is, um, because not everybody listening to this podcast has been to the Adirondacks or is super familiar with it. In fact, most people aren't. So um, can you just kind of describe like sure. what the over, I usually just say overcrowding, but I know that's not always the best way to put it. Can you, can you just describe like what the uh, the actual issue is before we get into what some of the proposed solutions are and all that stuff? Yeah, sure. So just a quick background. The Adirondacks, it's in upstate New York. It's a 6 million acre state park. It's the largest, um, largest state park in the country by far, but it's larger than most. Um, it's larger than every um, national park in the lower 48. Uh, including many just combined it's it's bigger than the state of vermont uh it's just a large protected uh land of public and private land it's a very unique spot um but with the location that it is in upstate new york it is you know it's it's four and a half to five hours from new york city it's like five hours from boston it's an hour and a half from montreal um it's, it's Five hours from Buffalo, New York. Actually, I guess less tech. That's where that's from Lake Placid. Actually, to get inside the park is even less. So, right in, in the scheme of things, it's basically it's a one single day drive from sixty million different people in the <laughs> U.S. and Canada. So it's a really easily accessible, just outdoors paradise uh, for so many people. And with COVID, obviously, everyone's shut up inside their house. And they want to get out. So um, people, you know, what's, what can we do that's outside and free? Well, hiking is pretty much that. So mm-hmm. that seems to be what everyone is doing. And uh, in my opinion, it's the best thing to do is to get outside and get in the woods. It's just, you know, for physical, mental, spiritual, the whole, the whole shebang. So it, it makes a lot of sense why the Adirondacks, which is already super popular, um, has become even more popular this year 
obviously with everything going on. So with that comes a lot of people saying, you know, the trails are all being overused and used and abused and there's too many people and this and that, but it's just kind of a, kind of like a buzzword to use the word overuse yeah. up here. And yeah, the trail, you could say that the trails are overused in the sense of like, they were never meant for the type of use that they're getting right now, which uh, nobody would argue because the trails when they were originally cut were just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need we need a trail from here to the top of the mountain. Let's yeah. just go straight up and boom, there's the trail. Uh, uh, just a little background as well. Um, the word vacation was coined in Lake Placid. That's what? Like, you know, no way, the, really? Yeah, dude. The, so basically the, you know, the rich elites of New York City back in the, Back in the olden times of, of sorts, uh, they'd come up to the Adirondacks. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what they did. They came up to these great camps that were here. And, you know, they, they you know, the rich folks, they want to go out and explore the mountains. So they would they quickly cut a trail. Like, for example, the trail up Mount Marcy, the tallest mountain in New York. It was just it's just like a straight trail. Boom. Go <laughs> go to the top of the mountain. Because they just needed trails cut quickly or trail or the trails that we are hiking were more for, um, you know, forest fire use and surveying and that sort of thing. Yeah. So like they've just kind of become hiking trails. And if you listen to my podcast episode, if any of this is of interest, you listen to the podcast episode that I did with a guy named Eric Schlimmer. It's called the state of the ADK. Uh, we just kind of go through a lot of this stuff and that dude is just so experienced and familiar and, what he has to say in my mind is complete gold, but we, we also see pretty eye to eye on all of this. But as far as like the history goes, yeah, he, he explains why these trails are what they are quite well. And the long and the short of it is that they were not really meant for hiking when they were cut because like hiking wasn't a thing. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, a thing really, you know, sure. Like these people want to see these beautiful nature views. So they'll, you know, they cut a quick trail a mountain and boom there it is it wasn't like there was no real rhyme or reason mm -hmm. as to how they cut the trail like they would do today um you know there's there's companies that cut trails because they know you know the science behind how yeah. to do trails that make sense but so with all that said that quick background was probably not as quick as it should have been <laughs> there's a lot of people here hiking but it's not and when i say like a lot of people it's not just this year it's probably you know let's just say the last decade it's been yeah that's what i was popular. gonna say because i feel like even from the first time i ever went over there which was in like 2013 mm -hmm. i've like noticed a difference since then so sure it's definitely been you know a, i don't even want to i don't know if it's a gradual a steady come up and then obviously yep. this past year covid even more people and that's without the freaking border being open too because yeah, there's a lot of true. people that come down from quebec so yeah um, it's that, so it's, true. it would have been even more if if that was the case um and one thing i, I do kind of want to uh make clear is you know a lot of places get talked about like oh this is overcrowded this is overcrowded or there's too many people here or whatever um i would say out of all the places i've hiked this is like it, it is very evident in the high peaks region sure. um more so than than other places so it's not like just another example of people complaining about too many people on the trails like there there's definitely a in an issue here um and that's not to say the issue is too many people but there's definitely there's definitely an issue um and we'll kind of get into all that stuff and then the last thing i just want to say real quick too is um we or at least I do this often when I'm talking about these things, I'll just say like, Oh, the Adirondacks, but really we're talking about the high peaks region of the Adirondacks. It, it's not, sure, yeah. it's not the entire Adirondack park. Cause there's, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of miles of trails, uh, and probably thousands, honestly, of, of miles of trails in the Adirondack park, but it's just the high peaks, which is just one specific section that has this, uh, this, this issue. Um, so I remember one thing you said on our last episode, James, which really, uh, kind of stuck out to me. I'm, I still remember it now, obviously, is, like I said, I usually call it an overcrowding problem, but maybe that's not really the best way to say it. And, and the thing that you had told me was you don't really see it as an over... I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but you mm -hmm. don't really see it as overcrowding. You see it more as a parking issue. Can you kind of explain what that meant exactly? Sure. Well, 
I guess basically kind of my opinion on this subject, which of course, you know, this is my opinion, which is yeah. meaningless, but it is my opinion. Um, the idea of overcrowding, you know, it's just like, okay, well, what number people is okay? You need to give like a number. So what number, so if it's, you know, if it's a hundred people, so 101, is that too many people, but a <laughs> yeah. hundred is okay. So it's like, this idea of like overcrowding overuse it's just there are these vague words that just don't really like tell you anything so for example like if you're gonna say oh you know cascade mountain which is probably the most hiked mountain here in the park in high peaks region you're gonna say that's overcrowded okay well i guess it's not though because it's not is it stopping all of these people from going up there no so i guess technically like if it's not making people not go i guess it's okay like these people don't it doesn't seem to bother them yeah uh, so i guess in that, that's why i say like it's just so hard to use these vague words that don't really have any sort of depth to what the, what they are past the word itself you know you can't really give an idea as to how how many people is too much and obviously that's you know you can't really say that so you know it's not deterring really anybody from going all of those people are still going to go up the mountain so I guess it's not overcrowded or they're okay with it. So I guess to say it as like, a, it's not helpful is not really getting us anywhere, but with the parking situation. Yes. Yeah, so the issue in my mind and, you know, someone who grew up here and has seen like, you know, the, the boom and the change and all that stuff. Um, we, it's such a, the Adirondacks is like, you go back in time once you cross over the blue line, whether you're coming, you know, you go south on I-87 and you get to the first town outside the blue line, you get to Queensbury. Queensbury is so different. Queensbury is like your typical like side of the highway. They have every, you know, chain. They got a great truck stop up. there though. That freaking yeah, pizza dude's so good. <laughs> and then you go north. It's like, okay, Plattsburgh is like the First town as you get out of the park and it's like okay college town again typical like suburban type of area and you go west you get to Watertown. it's just like the second you enter the blue line you just go back in time yeah oh, you completely yeah. go back in time and uh it's interesting and that's kind of what gives it it's like lore and it's enjoyment it's like but at the same time the adirondacks does kind of need to evolve with the time slightly because well, you need to keep what makes it so special. You do need to continue to evolve. And when people are saying like, oh, these trails weren't nearly this crowded in the 70s and 80s. yet, yeah, obviously they weren't. Life has changed since yeah. the 70s <laughs> and the 80s. It's different. So we need to evolve while still not losing the essence of this park. So in my mind, as you know, with all these towns, as I mentioned in the park, kind of like a ghost town so many of these towns are just dead and it's really heartbreaking to see uh you know it's easy for someone driving through the park who like doesn't live here and to just drive through and say oh man what a cool little town this is neat this is neat but it's dead the town is dying or there's the schools closed there's no more school and this and that it's just like yeah it's easy for you you're not affected by it so in my mind that's why i say like it needs to evolve so with as i mentioned earlier we have 60 million people a day's drive away and damn near all of them seem to be coming here, which mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, a fantastic problem, quote unquote, to have. Yeah. These towns, they are tourism. Tourism is what keeps this place alive and we need it. So to me, and this is a long winded answer, but I'm, I'm no, you're there. good, man. You're I'm good. It's, it's important. It's important stuff. And honestly, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just thought another question there, but I'll let you finish. So, you know, these towns, they need people to come. And I know we're talking about the high peaks region, but that's, you know, this, this kind of makes sense for the whole park in general, but you get all these people to come and, you know, it's like the trails are too you, over, they're overused, this and that's like, well, that's a fantastic problem to have that so many people want to come here. They want to spend their money here. They want to allow people to live here and make a living by spending their money here. So we should up the infrastructure to accommodate this use instead of trying to deter people to, from to coming limit it. Due, yeah. To, yeah, due to the lack of infrastructure because dude the infrastructure hasn't changed since the you know 70s and 80s so you know that's that's a problem so with parking parking to me is just like the first obvious no-brainer it's like okay every week 
in the newspapers and, you know, on all those hiking Instagram and Facebook pages and all that social media stuff. You know, people are always talking about, oh, this, these people are legally parking and this and that. It's the front page of the newspaper. Yeah, no shit, because there's nowhere <laughs> for them to park because we just can't seem to create more parking and get in like deal with this problem, quote unquote. It's such, dude, how many places in the country would be so stoked to have the problem of like, yeah. too many people are coming here to spend their money. It's I know. like, dude, it's a great problem to have and it's the outdoors. And, well, that, that's, you know, one of the, that's one of the reasons why, I, and I kind of touched on this as I led in this topic, that I think your opinion is so valuable because this is the, the, um, the issue of, or the, the, the uh you know the fact that people are coming here and, and, and spending their money is something that people who don't live in the park but frequent it might not think about as much right because sure. they don't have they don't have their skin in the game uh, yeah, in that they, regard and you do obviously because you live there so um yeah I, it doesn't I, affect them so much and that to me is like why it's easy to kind of ignore that yeah sure dude i totally get when somebody says, you know, I come up to the Adirondacks three, four times a year, I want to hike and I hate that there's all these people on the trails. I come up here to kind of get away from the rat race and this and that. Well, for starters, let's stop pretending that you're really running into that many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah I people. agree. I let's agree. Let's stop pretending like you're not walking through a mall. Yeah, maybe exactly. when you summit, there's a lot of people, but not all. It's like you, you, like you'll, you'll pass, you know, feel a few people here and there, maybe a couple an hour, maybe a little bit more if you're on some of the really popular trails, but it's not like you're, it's literally like a line of people from Correct. summit to trailhead. You know, it's not like, <laughs> it's, totally. it's not like that. And honestly, there was, there were sections of the Appalachian trail where I was seeing, you know, just as many people as, you know, the amounts I see when I'm over in the high peaks. So it's like, yeah, there's probably more people than a lot of folks would like, but it, you're, I absolutely agree with that. It's, it's not like a freaking train of people no. every single day on every single trail, you know? And you can also go elsewhere. I mean, dude, there are so yeah. many trails. <laughs> like, so you just, you hiked Northville Placid trail and uh, I did that back in the spring. So when you, so when you get to on the Northville Placid trail, when you get to uh, the Moose River Recreation Area and you walk out of the Moose River Area, um, oh, crap, I'm trying to remember what the name of that place is, the Moose River Rec Area. Uh, uh, I can't remember. In the Anyways, High Peaks or south no, there? No, it's, 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 it's basically, so I guess it would technically Wakely be, Dam? Is that Wakely it? Dam, yes, Wakely Dam. That's what I'm saying. So you get to Wakely Dam and you walk down the dirt road. Um, before you go back into the woods again, mm -hmm. you know, like the, like the Moose River wreck was like a campground and you walk through the, down the yeah. dirt road and then you go back in the woods, um, right up there. So you wouldn't, I drove down to, cause I sectioned it. So I drove down that road, but if you keep walking up that dirt road, instead of cutting back in the woods to continue on the Northville Placid trail, there were two different mountains that you pass. And I'm thinking to myself, as I'm there, I'm like, dude, I've never heard of either of these mountains, but there's two there's a trailhead right there for one and there's a trailhead mm -hmm. right there for another one i'm thinking to myself there are just so this is in the middle of nowhere there are so many places in this park that you can go to that you will never see anyone dude if you hike i can't remember the name of that mountain or those mountains right now but if you hike those mountains you're never gonna see anybody yeah so to say like oh there's too many people i don't want to see people well you are yeah. very easily able to go places where you won't see anyone even marked trails i'm not even talking you know off trail bushwhacking i'm talking like trails that clearly don't have nearly the foot traffic and uh you'll have you'll have a great time mm -hmm. so you know this idea that there's too many people you know there's too many people on cascade these people need to leave but i'm still going to go hike cascade well <laughs> yeah. okay i guess i guess well clearly there's not too many people because yeah, it's I guess not you're really still, you're still you. doing it yeah yeah <laughs> that's such a good um, point honestly i just um, feel like i feel like going back to what you said with you know not having skin in the game i think that's probably why i get so you know like uh very kind of real with the subject you know it's you know it, these towns and these people, they, they need the people coming here. So that the people who say there's too many people, we need permits, you know, and it's like, oh, cool. Where, where do you live or where are you from? It's like, oh, I live in Westchester. I go up to the Adirondacks a couple of times a year. And I'm just thinking to myself, dude, I don't care what you have to say about <laughs> yeah, right. the subject matter <laughs> because you're solely looking after yourself and yourself only. And yeah, sure. I get it. It would be cooler for less people to be here when you come. Like I understand it. I totally get it. But, uh, 
for the same reason that no one cares what I think about Westchester County. I'm, yeah. I'm going to not take what you have to say that with that much uh, weight because you're only because you're kind of missing the bigger picture. Yeah, or at uh, the very least, you know, they're – their thoughts might be lacking context, you know? Yes. And that's um, what I'm saying. Like they're missing kind of like the bigger picture of it all. Where yeah. There's so much more at involved in solely people on the trail, I J- guess is kind of how I see it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit here. Please so do. Um, going back to the parking thing, mm-hmm. I think people would say, Oh, well, and actually I have heard people say this before, like we can't build more parking because forever wild, because we can't just destroy the environment to build more parking. It's bad for the environment, blah, blah, blah. And my kind of thoughts on that, and I'll let you explain Mm -hmm. better thoughts probably, but my, my thoughts on that were always like, like why, like, (laughs) like, okay, like what's the all, like we build more parking or we don't like, you can't access the mountains as easily. Like that seems like a pretty like clear choice to me like like i just think we should sure. fucking just build more parking like yeah it sucks we got to cut down some trees and stuff but at the end of the day i think it's worth it um what are your thoughts on that kind of argument the forever wild and I mean, even yeah, putting yeah, sure. even putting the um the difficulty of doing that with you know dealing with the state uh, aside um what are your thoughts on that well for starters have you seen how big the adirondack park is? i know I right i think we yeah. can <laughs> handle uh i think we can handle clearing out another parking lot or two in the high peaked region that will completely remedy all of these problems. And, uh, you know, honestly, what it's, I mean, it's, it's terrible to say, and I hate myself for saying it, but quite frankly, what it's going to take to really up the thought process and like getting people to be serious about, okay, we really do need to tackle the parking issue is someone to get hit by a car on route 73. Mm-hmm. And it's going to happen. I mean, it is scary with the way people are parking. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't happened already. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to take someone getting plowed and it's going to happen because people walk you know, you're parked right on the side of a 55 mile an hour road and people, you know, they're kind of like in their zone, they're going hiking They're This is fun. And they forget like, Oh dude, you're on the side of a 55 mile an hour road right now that winds along mountains. So they walk in the road and this and that, and it's, it's, it's dangerous how people are parking. Um, but I just feel like, we have enough land we can clear a little bit of more, a little bit more land to make some places for people to park just some dirt parking lots it'll solve a lot of problems mm-hmm. and then on top of that you know people are like you know while well, people are shaking their heads you also already have areas like um you know the blueberry trail marcy field parking um you have marcy field like there's there's the idea of you know doing a shuttle service but yes maybe, i was gonna ask about that too maybe actually do a shuttle service that is useful instead of a shuttle service that runs from seven to five you know it's like it's, yeah. it just becomes so useless for so many people and what you're doing at that point too is you're kind of promoting people starting way later than they should mm-hmm. in, in the high peaks um which to me is uh, also problematic, but if it went from five to seven, five a.m. to seven p.m., well, now you're actually going to be able to. Yeah, it's going to be a lot more useful to people. And dude, here's another thing too. Oh, money, 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 money. Yeah, dude. Guess what? Zero percent of people will have a problem paying the ten bucks to go from the parking lot to the trailhead. If they def, they're going to get back to their car uh, at the end of the day. So you know, it's like we pay to park at the you know the Adirondack Lodge. We pay to park at the Garden. Um, I don't know why anyone would have a problem paying a shuttle service. It's just another lot. But if you have shuttles moving, well, that's what's paid. That's what's going to fund it is the the money from people parking to use the shuttle to go. Right. But when the, but when the shuttle is just freaking useless with the times that it runs, uh, it, to me, it's just not very helpful. Is there um? Are there any people that have? started their own i mean started i know businesses. I, I know i know there's like uh you know shuttles for the norfield placid trail and stuff like that like by appointment but has anybody just stepped up yet and been like yo i'm just gonna start my own little business and just run shuttles like in in the high peaks because that seems like a fucking like you know <laughs> pot of gold just sitting there like yeah. i'd be surprised if somebody hasn't like i'm honestly surprised that the there's not like already multiple people sure. doing that, or maybe I don't know about them, but uh, I don't it's really funny. hear about them very often. So no, there's nothing that I know of. And it's, I mean, I've had this conversation with my buddy, uh, who I hike with often. Um, actually he's been on this very podcast, Jonathan Zaharik. Uh, we've talked, we've joked a bunch about how we can make a freaking killer. Dude, I've been thinking park. about this too. Like, yes. <laughs> dude, think about this. If you park 
at the Adirondack Lodge every afternoon around like, especially if you have a pickup truck, dude, if you park there mm-hmm. around like 3 p.m. and just wait for because, you know, in the Adirondack Lodge, the, the parking lots get so full and some people have to park, you know, they park two, three miles down the road, like way away from the trailhead. And so you park like you go there around three o'clock in the afternoon. People are limping out of the trail and you say, hey, <laughs> 10 bucks and I'll drive you the three miles down the road to your car. Dude, everyone's going to pay know. that. You just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 10 bucks here, 10 bucks there, 20 bucks here, 20 bucks there. You can make a killing. But uh, in the same thing, you could do that. You know, they should do the same thing. And the parking problem also is, I guess you could say the parking problem is really in like the Keene, Keene Valley area. Yeah. Of the high peaks region where the, you know, the, those mountains are. But uh, you could do the same thing and make money. But yeah, I always joke about how you, if, if you parked at the lodge, because so many times I'll be driving out from a hike and you'll just pass people just limping the miles <laughs> to their car and you just stop and say, hey, you want to ride your car because I'm going to pass your car. And they always hop in and they're so stoked that you picked them up. And yeah, uh, you could actually... That happened to me once, actually. Money. That happened to me when I was um, it was actually my last peak ever. I, I, I sent um haystack from Heart Lake, and when I finished, I had to park at the lower lot. I got like the last freaking spot at the lower lot. Um, mm-hmm. I, I showed up at seven fifteen a.m., which as Adirondack high peaks hikers know on a Saturday is apparently too late. But um, sure. I was, I freaking, I, I did the road walk in the morning, but I, it was like 25 miles at that point. And some guy, yeah, he just was gracious enough to drive me the, you know, I, I would have made it like I wasn't injured or anything, but I was very happy to accept that offer. So thank yeah. you to whoever did that. Um, I, I kind of want to do, uh, or, uh, I kind of want to play devil's advocate a little bit more here. So sure. people might say like, okay, you increase the parking, you build bigger parking lots, you increase the shuttles, you make you know, you eliminate that part of the problem. It's like, yeah, the roads might get a little safer, but there's still going to be too many people on the trail. In fact, there might even be more people on the trail. You're making it too easy for people to access the trails. They're just going to become overrun. Mm -hmm. Um, What would you, and I know we kind of touched on it a little bit there, but I I feel like there's somebody out there that's probably thinking like, okay, if you build more parking, the parking lots are just going to fill. And then that means even more people. And then eventually the problem might just happen all over again, or at the very least more impact on the trails and stuff. So what would you kind of say um, in regards to that? Sure. Well, for starters, so with the, with the, with the shuttles, shuttles will be funded by people paying to use the shuttle. And then the parking lots, the parking lots are definitely a more, um, a more infrastructure situation that would have to come together with the towns and um, state and all of that stuff. And maybe the private landowners, that some of that land might be private land. Uh, that would, that would be something that would have to come together for the good of the parks. You know, everyone's going to be talking about it's easy to just say we need this, but how does that happen? Well, mm-hmm. for the, that in particular, that's what has to happen for the, the advancement of the Adirondacks uh, moving forward in the future. And the trails will be the same thing. But yes, it would bring more people uh, naturally, or it will just same, you know, people will, it will, place will continue to grow, but there'll be much less problems to deal with when it comes to that. Now, with the trails, the trails, are something that is going to have to be, you know, a generational. Fix. So these trails need some sustainable trail work done mm-hmm. to them. You know, sustainable trails need to be built, but it's going, and, you know, uh, Eric Slimmer said it best on my episode. He's, you know, he mentioned that these, the state obviously has way bigger problems to deal with in its budget than <laughs> trails, you know, yeah. homelessness and, you know, those things, met, those things will take way uh, higher precedence over hiking trails. Yeah. Uh, so obviously we understand it's at the low end of the totem pole, but the money that is allotted to me, it just seems like, okay, don't, don't make new trails, take the trails that you have and build and, you know, continue and work on them with sustainable design as the is the key word on how to fix them. And you just go start with the very busy mountains, you know, the, the very busy mountains, with ha- you know, the, get the most action and the trails that don't, weren't built well and are, you know, are constantly problematic. 
and you just have to look at it as a generational fix. So it's like, this is going to take, this could take a yeah. hundred years. It's this not going to happen fit. overnight. Yeah. And you, but, but you look at it as we're in this for the long haul and you just go one by one, one by one. And like, that is the only way to realistically do it. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 the key word being generational, that's, that's ultimately what would happen. There's definitely no short fix. The short fix is, Here's a herd path. Go. Yeah. That's how we got to this point in to begin with. So you've got all these people that are, you know, so in love with the high peaks, everybody doing their 46, joining the club and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the Adirondack Mountain Club exists. I'm not, I know, but I also know, I I, I think at least the DEC does most of the, the work. Um, uh, so I'm just, I'm just totally off the top of my head here. I'm just thinking mm-hmm. about the way like, uh, a lot of other trails outside of the Adirondacks are, are done. So the Appalachian Trail, of course, it's a lot of uh, federal and state land. But, you know, the ATC is a you know private group responsible for kind of overseeing sure. everything. Um, and so I'm almost wondering in my head, it's like if the state won't prioritize the trails, which and I, I hate to say it, but I kind of like can't really blame them. Uh, New York's not exactly known for having an excess amount of money in their budget either, but uh, no. that's a that's a di- whole whole different subject. But um, it's like I'm almost wondering if like we've got all these people that are so passionate about these mountains. Like I wish it was easy, but it'd be cool if people could just kind of like step up and and kind of take it into their own hands. I don't know how much involvement does the Adirondack Mountain Club have with uh, actual trail maintenance. Well, the Adirondack Mountain Club they have different trail crews um each year that they hire you know seasonal trail work and how they go about deciding what you know what sections or what trails or this or that get worked on that i have no idea Um, but the adirondack mountain club they do have actual professional trail crew Mm -hmm. Um, the 46ers organization which is all volunteer um do they do trail work too they do. They do volunteer oh, okay. trail work. I, did, I didn't know that. All right. Yeah, they do volunteer trail work and um, sometimes on herd paths too, which is awesome because, you know, yeah. obviously those are just paths that have just been made uh, from foot traffic. So, yeah, they do. They volunteer. And then, yeah, I don't know how the DEC determines what they're doing. But to me, it's just one of those things where everybody needs to come together for the good of the park as the park being bigger than all of us, bigger than every, you know, Adirondack organization that are seemingly always at odds with every other Adirondack organization. Uh, They need to all kind of come together and get on the same team for the betterment of the park because the park is bigger than all of us and the park deserves it, quite frankly. Um, Mm -hmm. And then they can really determine and decide. And again, as I mentioned, the idea of sustainable design, um, learning a ton about it from um, my buddy Eric, it's just, it's the way to do it. And it's like, are we going to do, are we going to slap more band-aids on it? Or are we going to fix this for the future? And you have to be in it for the long haul for the future. And to me, that is the way to determine what should be worked on and if you put all your efforts into the same things, uh, you know, beautiful things will happen when everyone gets on board. Um, mm-hmm. Would be great, if, you know. Same thing. It's to kind of like a microcosm of the, the country. If everyone would get on board with one another for the greater good, uh, we could all do some wonderful things. But I think that's ultimately what needs to happen here in the park um, for these trails. To, yeah. To flourish and flourish for the long term. And Definitely. Let's, let's let's remember too, dude. These mountains, dude. They don't need us. They're going to be just <laughs> fine, whether we're here trampling on these trails or not. They're going to, they'll be here long after we're gone. They are going to do just fine, you know. So we need to. We should be doing our part to take take what we do have here in the mountains and work together to make to be as good to them as we possibly could. And I think that would be the way to, to go about it with yeah. everybody getting on board for one goal, I guess, mm-hmm. instead of just like, we're doing this, you're doing that. We're doing this, you're doing that bandaid here, bandage there. Um, it just seems, you know, again, and then it comes back to everyone's making these, these buzzword blanket statements <laughs> that don't have any sort of depth to them. Well, okay. So let's cut out the bullshit and let's, 
let's get to down and fix what we're saying instead of just being loud. You don't like buzzwords, James, really? Yeah, I don't get this, down this with This past year must have been a them. nightmare for you then. Um, um, it's almost <laughs> over, but I don't, I don't foresee it getting much better once uh, the clock strikes midnight on New Year's Eve. I don't either, but we won't go there. Um, maybe after we're done recording. But anyways, sure. um, so we're almost you know over 40 minutes into this discussion at this point. Um, I guess like 30 minutes because the first 10 minutes are just fucking around or whatever. But we haven't even touched on what, in my opinion, is like the most uh, controversial part of this whole issue. Um, and I think that's probably okay because everything kind of leads up to this. But again, I'm going to try to play devil's advocate here. You know, we've talked about how, okay, we need to build more parking, but then people are just going to fill the parking lots. Okay, you know, we need more sustainable trail design. That's great. But, you know, there's still going to be a lot of people here. That's going to be really hard to get done. It's going to take a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of time. Wouldn't it be easier if we could just create a permit system and, you know, just restrict I mean, that's basically, that's what it is to restrict the amount of people that are using the trails and bring the, bring the levels back down to, um, something that's, you know, going to work with the infrastructure, the trails that we have now. Um, and this is something that I haven't thought a ton about, but my instinct is hell no, if I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I've seen people talking about this, uh, on Facebook, especially in the, in the massive Facebook groups that are now dedicated to the Adirondacks. Um, this is something that comes up quite frequently, and it seems like there's a lot of different opinions out there. And again, I haven't dove into this too, too much, but at least the couple ones that I remember off the top of my head, I'm sure it's different every time, but I just remember it seemed like there's a lot of momentum kind of around this idea of a permit system. And in, yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just one thread or whatever that I'm, I'm remembering, but, uh, that kind of scared me a little bit. I don't like the sure. I don't like the uh, the sound of that. But if I try to explain why, I'm going to sound like an idiot because I already do. So um, I already kind of know your opinion on this, but I'm curious to hear you elaborate. Um, what sure. are your thoughts on the uh, the whole permit discussion as it relates to the Adirondacks or the high peaks? Yeah, I am with you on Team Hell No. Uh, I think it's an absolutely terrible idea. Uh, once government touches anything. Um, a, you're never getting it back. It's not going to ever go away. It's yeah. going to be so much worse. And also, I mean, the, the reason people are always talking about, oh, permits out west, permits here, permits there. Yeah, dude, nobody lives in those places. The Adirondack Park is just so different mm -hmm. um, from all these places. You know, it's just like, so now you're telling this person who, you know, their land butts up against state land that technically they're actually not even allowed to walk you know, out their back door into the woods because they didn't get a quote unquote permit to access the state land. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And you'll off, you know, it's just like we're you 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 want to you want to rent the land back from the government, which we already pay our state taxes. It's a state park. You're already paying your taxes, but now I have to also rent the trail from you for the day. I'm not into it. I'm not going to get down with it. Once that system is put in place, it's never going away. And I don't think people seem to grasp that thought mm -hmm. process. Um, and, you know, you'll often hear comparisons with um, hunting and fishing. It's like, well, you need a hunting license for this. You need the fishing license for that. Yeah, well, that month. And yes, that brings in money, um, which is terrific. But, you know, and it, you're harvesting game when you're hunting and when you're fishing. You're not just you're not with hiking. You're walking. You're just accessing the land. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need to. You're not your, your permit when you're hunting is to harvest the deer. You're, it's not to just simply access the land. Uh, it's such a different concept. Uh, so that comparison to me is just completely not even in the same ballpark. Um, and again, as I've mentioned, the fact I think that people live in the park, you know, it's like there's no entrance. So, you know, you want these permit systems or like, you know, you pay to enter the park. I hear people say that all the time too. And it's like, I'm not going to pay to go home, asshole. Sorry. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not going to do that. Um, I've heard that a few times and it just, it makes me chuckle. Well, you could say if you live outside of the blue line, then, then you got to pay or something like that. I don't know. Not going to, it's not going to work very yeah. well. Um, and again, let's stop, let's stop keeping people away 
when we have such an amazing problem, quote unquote, on our hands that people want to come here and uh, let's take these dying areas and dying towns and let's let's let them, let's help them to thrive once again. And you know, ultimately, my desire for this Adirondack Park is for more young people to move here uh, that are always here. And, you know, move here, start a family here, start a job here, like let like rebuild the society that is the Adirondack Park, because I think it could flourish so well uh, with some nice young life. Um, and I think that that ultimately is what is what the towns need to really thrive is uh, people moving here and living here, uh, you know, to build these vibrant communities. Mm -hmm. But with the permits, it just seems like because of the fact that people live here, it's just a different animal than accessing yeah. trails in a national park. I think I think the last portion of this discussion that we haven't really – I mean, we touched on it a little bit. But um, people are going to say – and I think rightly so in this case. People are going to say, okay, well, you're, you're if you're not for limiting you know, access, um, if you're not for – yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna leave it there. Limiting access. Um, what's gonna stop people from, you know, trashing the trails or not even maybe trashing sounds a little dramatic. But well, you know, how are people gonna learn how to be good stewards of the trails? How are people gonna learn about leave no trace? If we're gonna encourage people to visit these trails, obviously we don't want, um, you know, yeah, we don't want the trails to be trashed. We don't, uh, you know, we don't. We there's sure. got to be a way to educate new folks that are coming um and this is true everywhere but i think it's especially worth talking about here because it is kind of like okay you're either want restricting you know you, you either want to restrict access to solve the problem or you want to kind of change things in order to accommodate the, the influx of people and if you're going to do that um there's 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 got to be some way to educate people about leave no trace and, and educate people about how to take care of the, sure. the trails, take care of the park and all this stuff. Um, I don't, I, at least from my perspective, I don't know if there's a super straightforward, easy answer, but I'm definitely, I'm curious to get your thoughts on that. How do we deal with um, increased amounts of people and also teach them to be good stewards of the, uh, the trails at the same time? Sure. Well, um, anybody who's been on the internet, probably been leave no trace shamed by somebody at this point in, in their life because people love to uh <laughs> love to shame those uh who don't practice these and you know the idea of i can't imagine anybody hiking any trail in the world today hasn't gone on social media and seen somebody post a picture of them picking <laughs> up trash on the trail and saying and having a, a post that says can you believe i picked up all this garbage and yeah, maybe I guess it doesn't count unless you post on social media <laughs> that you picked up garbage to, you know, kind of pat for everybody yourself listening. On the James and I have kind of like talked about this before on this. We always like kind of make fun of people who just like <laughs> overtly like virtue signal about like how much they love leave no trace. <laughs> virtue signal, yeah. That I guess I guess that's the word. But here's the thing, though. You know, like the the way to sure sure. Oh, let me just let me finish that last little joke thought though. Uh, here's a challenge for everyone. You see trash on the ground, just pick it up, put it in mm -hmm. your pocket, and freaking move on with your day. You don't need to post on social media that you picked up garbage. Just do it because that's what you love this place, and you should pick it up. You don't want it there, so just pick it up and then move on. That is the attitude that everyone should, should take. You know, the leave no trace shaming that seems to happen all the time is, to me, pretty off. It's not the right way. And actually, I did an episode with two people from the Leave No Trace organization, and I mentioned this to them, and they said that it's – I'm not the first person to bring up that kind of like leave no trace shaming is a problem subject to them. And they know they've, they've seen it too. And like, they're like, that's not what we're of course not, not yeah. trying to be that. But that ultimately is what it's become that, that virtue signaling thing. But um, so going back with like picking up trash and how do we, how do we get people to learn? I think you get people to learn and to become stewards of the trail by them being out and enjoying themselves. And, you know, like, following suit so for example you talk to someone on the trail you pass someone on the trail they come up once once a year it's their first time second time whatever they don't really have that deep connection with the mountains yet mm -hmm. Why would they they're new it's you know it's a new thing and this doesn't this isn't, doesn't apply to just the adk this is just the outdoors in general um what i'm saying but you talk to them on the trail and they just 
they can just see it and it's contagious in you like how much you love this place and how beautiful it is and how much you just love being a steward of this land like they're going to see that on you because you're going to be authentic by just explaining why you love it not at anyone but just in general you're just like this is why i love this place isn't it beautiful and they're going to say yes it is so beautiful and you say, oh man i just love being here that kind of contagious attitude where I'm not trying to show you, I'm not trying to teach you anything is actually going to be more beneficial and more educational than like you coming mm -hmm. up and shaming someone for accidentally dropping a wrapper out of their pocket or not knowing that, you know, the idea, you know, how the whole concept of digging a cat hole and burying and all that jazz, you know, like it's just to see people doing it solely because right. for the love of it. Is, is to me is, is the w way to be more right. educational. I, dude, I, I agree thing. with that so much. And honestly, I could do like a whole episode just on this on this topic. But to me, it just seems like so much of the time when people, you know, have such bad attitudes about leave no trace violations, it's like, I, I feel like they just assume bad intent. Like they assume like, like I remember one that's, sure. I don't know why I always think of this one, but I remember one time somebody was up on top of a mountain and someone had like, cut down a couple trees up there not big ones but just little ones and maybe had like a fire pit and yeah it looks ugly we don't want people doing that stuff um but i just feel like when that kind of thing happens and you know, these people that are just like so in love with the mountains and they just they get so upset by it and they just assume bad intent or if not bad intent they just assume that the person's just like a complete idiot and just like how could you not think this through like how could you like cut down this tree build a fire pit on top of a mountain or whatever and it's like, again, yeah, like we don't want that to happen. Like, I don't get excited when that happens, when I see that stuff. I don't want to see that happen. But, like, I, I really do think a lot of the time you need to pause and, like, think about these things. Like, okay, what was going through this person's head? All right, it was probably a beginner hiker. Um, If it was an experienced hiker and they just didn't give mm -hmm. a shit, then fine. Like, fuck them. But for the most, you know, the vast majority of the time, it's it's not somebody like that. Um, This person yeah. probably went up there with a couple friends maybe their first time or they haven't done it that much they probably don't even know what leave no trace is they're camping they want to have a fire how do you have exactly. a fire you cut you get need wood how do you get wood you cut down a tree it's like again and that doesn't make it right but it sounds a little bit more understandable when you when you when you think through the process like that and so and and I actually used this example in a in a video I did a while back I think it was this example I used um it's like if you if you shame that person for those actions, like you're not gonna get through to them. They're just gonna be like, oh, like what are you talking about? I was just making a fire. I was no. camping. Like fuck, like fuck off. Like it's not a big deal. Um, but if you actually take the time to explain, you know, okay, this, you know, why you don't want to do those things, and maybe um, alternative spots to camp, and you know, ways to make fires in areas where you can make your legally make fires um, that aren't so you know impactful on the environment. Um, if you can, you know, get through to them in that way, it's going to have a positive impact. But it just, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, James, but, you know, just the shaming and stuff, you, you got me going now. That that stuff really, it really pisses me off too, man. I, sure, yeah. it, not only because it's obnoxious, which it is, well, but you, even more so, I just think it's counterproductive to the cause. Um, it's, yes. yes. It's detrimental. It doesn't help the situation. And what it, you know, yeah, it just doesn't help. And there's just so many better ways to go about it uh, than to do that. And again, exactly what you said, it's just like a logical answer. The person most likely just doesn't know innocently doesn't know. And yeah, we know it makes us nervous that, you know, it's fine if you don't know, but you know, that still could start a forest fire and that's, it sucks, but you know, that's why leave no trace exists. And think about, you know, it's like we could, we could harp all day on the, on the negatives. Um, but like, think about the amount of, millions of people that have heard of leave no trace and do know and what that organization has done you know look at the, there's a there's a, a popular picture from the top of mount marcy in like the 80s and it's oh, just really? like covered in trash covered you go up there mm -hmm. now and it's just it's immaculate because of the work that's been done so it's like if you think about you know you mentioned like well if the trails get more and more you know people on them they're going to destroy the trails well i don't think so i think with the kind of like the momentum that the leave no trace organization has done is just extraordinary and the i'll just flat out say easily the majority mm -hmm. of people out there know 
without it. And if they weren't there, then it would still all look like trash. But I just think that like this situation and this subject matter is one of those um, is one of those situations where you should you should praise the positives yeah, instead yeah. of and, and, and I think you'll probably agree with this, James. Um, you know, we're kind of complaining about people, uh, you know, picking up trash and virtue signaling about it on online. I, because yeah, the intent it, I is the wrong intent. The intent for those scenarios is not let me pick up the trash because it's the thing to do. The intent is let me show you how much of a steward yeah, exactly. I am compared to this asshole who exactly. isn't. And that is the wrong intent. The correct intent is pick it up, throw it in the trash. And move on with your day because the mountains deserve it and you want to yeah. be the steward of and one the thing land. i, I just want to add intent. is um that you know that's not to say that you should never post anything about how you picked up trash i mean for me it's the reason it gets to me when people do that is exactly what you just said because of the intent if you if you can make it a positive thing then i don't think anybody's going to have a problem with you um you know posting about it it's, it's just the it's just the 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 negative the negative uh tone that those posts often take which again i understand you know we don't like to see our mm -hmm. our beloved mountains being trashed um but i just i i think there's a better way to to go about it and honestly dude most of the people listening um pretty much all the people listening i i can almost guarantee you uh agree with us so um there's that <laughs> sure i mean i i promise all of you listening <laughs> i'm not an asshole I will say, if I have offended you about the posting pictures of you throwing trash out, <laughs> I am not sorry. And for all of the people who do pick up trash and don't feel the need to post about it, shout out to you for just doing the right thing when no Hell one's yeah. looking because that's um, what dude. We we are pretty much an hour in now. Um, oh, we didn't even get to winter hiking. I know. I was gonna say I'm gonna have to have you back on now, uh, which I mean, of course, I would have done eventually, anyways. But uh, we're gonna have to do another one soon because for everybody listening. We had the two topics we were going to talk about is what we talked about today. The, um, the, the, see, I still can't even say it. The, the, the overcrowding is what I always just default to issue in the Adirondacks. I mean, we we're also going to talk about winter hiking in the Adirondacks because James is a pretty experienced winter hiker. He's done some gnarly shit in the Adirondacks in the middle of the winter. And as many of you know, listening, uh, I'm starting to get into it this year, into the winter thing that is. And I, definitely wanted to pick his brain about it so i guess we'll have to save that for another episode and it's gonna have to be soon because sure. you know winter as long as it feels um is obviously not going to be here forever so tis the um, season yeah dude we'll we'll have to do that um james thank you so much for coming on here i, I another thing i want to stress real quick here obviously um this is you know just james's opinions um i really value his opinions on this stuff that's why i had him on um, and you know, I'm sure there's some people that disagree and that's all, that's all well and good. So if you want to, um, you know, f uh, add to this discussion, uh, my inbox is always open. I'm always happy to hear, happy to hear from people. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I'm sure James won't mind either. If you have some, uh, well thought out, uh, input on what we talked about today, um, don't, don't be a jerk. Don't, don't, don't like message him like bad shit now that I said that. But, uh, I, uh, I, I don't think he'd have a problem nah, it's fine. to, uh, to add to the discussion. It's good. I, think I it's love good. having these discussions with people because, you know, anytime you have this sort of discussion, all of you ultimately want the same thing. Uh, you just see kind of different paths to get there. But, uh, even if you disagree with what I said, that's totally cool. I'd love to chat with you and message with you and, uh, uh, have a friendly conversation about it 100 percent. yep all right uh james plug your stuff man where can people go find your podcast your social media all that good stuff sure you can find the podcast on instagram and facebook at four six of four six podcast 46 of 46 podcast it's on spotify apple podcast stitcher all of those just search the 46 of 46 podcast and you'll find it that word the tends to a uh, tends to trip people up but you'll find it if you search that and uh yeah lots of fun episodes if you like uh you're driving your car you want to feel like you're out on the trail the closest thing you can do is listen to a podcast from the trail go check it out you might like it yes and you will feel like you're on the trail when you listen to james's podcast it's much different than this um and it's it's awesome in that regard so that's gonna do it thank you james thank you to everybody listening uh, episode 101 is done. Have a good one.